Davis. Y'all run that bird. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Greetings, heathens. Welcome to Hail Satan. This is the podcast exploring Satanism, culture, and life in general through the eyes of modern Satanists. My name is Joseph Rose. I'm a member of the finest congregation in all the land. We're called Satanic Delco, and we welcome members from anywhere in the world. If you want to learn a little more about that, visit satanicdelco.com. Today, Kirsten will be joining us to talk about coming out of the closet, so to speak, about your Satanism, and if that's a choice that is right for you. First, let me acknowledge a bunch of rad, supportive Satanists that have joined Satanic Delco recently through Patreon. We've got Coco, Brandon, Quistel, Casey, Derek, Zach, Abs, Will, Omen, Encronium, Eric, Jane, Emily, Alexandra, Nicole, JB, Vicky, Nathan, Kid Cactus, Sparkle, Bird, Travis, and Virginia. Fucking A. Thank you guys. You all kick ass and you make all of this possible. I'll see you guys over on the Zoom or wherever I can find you. If you have a moment out there, please visit the website at HailSatanPodcast.com. You'll find links there to join me on social media, a form to send me an email, which would be great, and a link to join up with us all on Patreon. We have a few different tiers there for you to choose from with various benefits, including our fun Greetings from Hell Satanic Postcard of the Month Club. That is the most direct way you can support me and this show. If you'd like to do that, visit HailSatanPodcast.com. All right. We are now joined by Kirsten of Satanic Delco fame. She's been on the show before. Greetings, Kirsten. Hello, Joseph. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm well. What the hell are we talking about today? Uh, I figured we would talk about coming out as a Satanist, uh, considerations that might be on your mind when you're thinking about if I should come out to a specific person or to everyone and then also, if you choose not to come out, if you need to practice, if you want a, a ways to practice your Satanism uh, and express yourself privately, some of the ways that you can do that and the support systems that you can find that are not part of your everyday life necessarily. Well, all right. I'm going to let you kind of take the lead through this conversation because this was a topic that you were interested in and sort of prepared for a little bit. Yeah, when when you come on here, you usually take the lead, I well, think. It's been two whole, <laughs> one whole episode now we're about... Yeah. A minute into into take two. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll take I'll take over the podcast eventually. That okay. has been my goal all along. All right, I suspect. Um it. Yeah, let's get into it. What have you got? Yeah. So I think this is something that every Satanist deals with. It's relatable for everyone of every denomination of Satanism. It's a conversation that we see come up a lot. Yeah, we definitely see it come up a lot. Um everybody's got a different story and different considerations in their life. And I guess we will just talk through some of them. There's so many reasons that you might choose to keep your Satanism private from from people, uh, from anybody in the world, from everybody, or from like your parents or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but there are so many reasons that you might want to want people to know. It might be really important for you that your best friend know that you're a Satanist. Uh, it might be very important to you that everybody in your life know that you're a Satanist. If it's something that's like a core facet of your identity, it might be really important to you to be able to express yourself freely with the people immediately around you and just around in the world. Um, but but then if it's not that important to you, it might be something that you just are okay keeping to yourself or okay keeping to a few friends online. Sure. Um, I think it's important when it is when Satanism is important to you and you do want to come out, I think it's important to find a balance between like self-expression and then self-preservation. You don't want to put yourself in danger necessarily. And there's some things that are part of Satanism and modern Satanism today, specifically the activism stuff Mm. that might require you to be a little bit more public about your Satanism. People Um, do get emotional about 
politically related things. Yeah. So it's good to find a balance for you. You need to be safe, even if your activism requires you to be public. You need to be safe, even though uh, it might be important for you to express yourself. There's ways to do that without endangering yourself necessarily. Yeah. Now, also, while I got you here, should we talk about where you kind of stand and, and how you've worked through this yourself? Where do you land on this whole being out or not about it? Yeah, so I take a very sort of relaxed attitude to it. I don't I don't project myself to the world that way. I don't I didn't announce it on Facebook, which some people do. I don't I don't feel the need to come out to people. I wouldn't if I just met you, I wouldn't say, "Oh, by the way, Joseph, I am a satanist." Mm. That's not the way that I do it. Uh, I am not hiding it either. I if people find out, they find out. It's not the end of the world for me most of the time. And a big part of that is that I don't really have people in my life that would be, you know, massively upset about it. I suppose Uh, my grandmother doesn't like it. I imagine, but does she know about it? My, my mom, I think I know that she has known in the past, but I don't know if she still knows or remembers, you Mm, know, although my sister recently became a Satanist as well. Mm. And if my sister hasn't posted about it somewhere, she will eventually. And my Mm. mom will know. Uh, but I, the, re- the reason my mom knows is because of Facebook. And uh, I got in a fight once with my uncle about, <laughs> this was a long, long time ago, with my uncle on Facebook about, it was when the Democratic National Convention was being accused of removing Under God from the national anthem. Okay. Uh, which it turned out was false. <laughs> Just a, a rumor that happened immediately after that was uh, demonstrably false. But, yeah. uh, you know, everyone was all upset about uh, I was on there, and somehow we got to the Hail Satans <laughs> and the Ave Satanas. Right. And my mom mom said, your words frighten me. Yeah. So that's where uh, my mom mom stands with it. But I don't know if she remembers that conversation. She was very disappointed in you. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I bet you, though, she doesn't know. Even then, she might not know that I am a Satanist. She might just think I was being snarky online. Sure. Um, but yeah, I bet she would not like it at all. Yeah, so I think if, there's probably, generally speaking, a lot of grandmas won't yeah. like it. Yeah, I know my other grandma, my other grandma has has passed away, but she would not have been happy with it either. Yeah. And, and I also I don't wear a ton of satanic clothing or anything. I do have my satanic Delco hoodie, which is very easily identifiable as a satanic hoodie. Right. But other than that, I don't. You wear, wear a, a little uh, inverted cross necklace. Sometimes I see a very small one. Yeah. I, I need to get a new one. I've only had people comment on that maybe at least once, maybe twice. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not hiding it. If, if people see my little inverted cross necklace, it's fine. Sure. If people see my my inverted cross hoodie, it's fine. And I'll talk a little bit more about dress as we we go through this. But I don't come out. I don't announce myself. I don't uh, present myself to the world and say, "Hey, world, post about it on Facebook." It's not so important to me even that everybody knows, so I won't announce it. But I'm not keeping it a secret. There, I guess there are people I hide it from. I wouldn't tell certain coworkers. Um, coworkers, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I'll also we'll talk a little bit about coworkers and stuff. But sure. And where do you stand, Mister? I've got a satanic podcast. I mean, I'm pretty out there about it. Yeah. I've just I don't know. It's just always been my way. I can't. Uh, I can't do it any other way. When I feel like I'm hiding something or covering up part of it or whatever, that bothers me. And I know I'm not a good source of advice for this because my experience is just different. I just decided or, you know, honestly, I don't know that I ever decided. I think it was just a part of my personality from a fairly young age that I was just that way. Like I am kind of going to be what I am. And if you don't like it, well, I'm sorry for your luck. And I don't put myself in positions generally in life where I would need to hide something. I sort of just avoid the idea of that. You know, if I would need to have some job where I would never be allowed to, um, I don't know, be myself generally, well, I'm just not going to take that job. And that's why my job is being a satanic podcaster, (laughs) Uh, because it's not going to fly in a whole lot of other places. But yeah, I'm just out there. I don't give a fuck who knows. I don't really care what they think about it. I'm open and I'll talk about it. I'll answer questions. I'll... I'll get into a whole thing if I'm in the mood, but yeah, I'm not worried about hiding it or anything. 
Yeah. Like we said, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that are worried <laughs> about their jobs, about their family, yes. about whatever it is. Yeah. And, and like I said, yeah, I'm just not a good example. <laughs> like I can't really offer advice. I mean, I can offer advice, but maybe I'm just not the best example because I know that not everyone is able or uh, willing to try and have that attitude about it that I do. And, you know, even if they wanted to, some people's family or job or friends or just geographical location could prevent them from being able to be so out and free about it uh, for all kinds of different reasons that we might touch on. Yeah. And so if you're if you're in that position right now where you're deciding if you need to tell people uh, or if you want to stay in the closet, I, I guess there's some some things that, that are of consideration. Um, the first one for me, the, the biggest one for me is how important it is to you. If you're like Joseph and you can't do it any other way, then there's, you know, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big consideration for you. Yeah. Um, if it's not that important to you, then, then some of the other priorities might be your safety. I like to approach it sort of on a person to person basis. Uh, the first question that I would ask is, does this specific person need to know? Uh, if you're a little bit more concerned, you might consider it on a person-to-person basis. Uh, how important is it to you that a particular person know? Uh, like I said, your best friend might, you might want your best friend right, to know. Right, But does your boss need to know? Yeah. Depending, again, like like you said, how, on how important it is generally, how much of a part of you is it? Is it sort of just a casual thing that you've been into for six months? Is it a, you know, just a a new interest. Maybe you're at your very earliest stages of thinking about Satanism or identifying as a Satanist. That's one thing. But if it is a part of your identity and if you do feel strongly about it, then that's where that negotiation or whatever sort of comes to mind. Like it might be really important to you, but of course you weigh the pros and cons of a certain person knowing your boss, your mom, your girlfriend. And if you're not super out in public about it for whatever reason, there might still be people in your personal life that you would want them to know, a close person, a friend, a partner, something like that. You probably would want them to know if it's something you feel strongly about. Yeah. Yeah. And and I was thinking about identities on the way, the way here, mm. um, because even – I guess you could say that you're a pretty deep into Satanism. Um, I guess I'm in it now. Is it a part of your identity? <laughs> if you took it away, are you still Joseph Rose? If you took Satanism away? Or if you took the word Satanism away or what, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think a lot changes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know that people's personalities would necessarily change, but some people really like to have a word and need to have a word, and it's an identity category for them. Yeah. And I also feel pretty deep into Satanism. Like, I've been in it for a couple of years now. I've been pretty active in this group for a couple of years now, yeah. uh, but I don't feel like it's a strong identity category for me. Yeah, it's more important to some than others, for sure. I say not much would change, and I I don't suspect that it would. I don't know. It'd be weird. Like if suddenly tomorrow Satanism were removed from my life one way or another, um, obviously my life would be changed because so much of what I do on a daily basis has to do with Satanism, working on the podcast or Satanic Delco or any of the projects that we get into. Yeah. So that would be different, but I and, I don't feel like I would be very different. Satanism is such a – the way Satanism hits people uh, on the outside of it, regular, maybe casually Christian person or, or completely a religious person out there in the world, they can sometimes have strong reactions to Satanism. And – that kind of thing is such a natural match with my personality anyway. You know, like I'm sort of a pain in the ass You or love whatever. a strong reaction. I like a, I'm, I'm, no, I'm annoying. Yeah, that's one of the other <laughs> things that I put as a, as a consideration is, you know, is this person going to react appropriately? Right. Whatever appropriately means to you. Um, is it going to put you in danger if you tell this person you're a Satanist? Right. Uh, that might apply to your parents, you know, if or you're, the people you live with is is – that going to put you in danger of physical harm or emotional harm or a loss of housing or a job or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I've talked to people on the show at least a couple of times where they've described that they would feel not safe at all just wandering around where they live being out there as a Satanist wearing some kind of clothing or yeah. identifying anything that would 
draw that kind of attention, they they would feel actually in danger. Yeah, and we're I mean, I guess we're fortunate that we live in in Delco and not in any place like that. Yeah. And like I said, are they going to react appropriately? It isn't necessarily just about danger or uh, you know aggressiveness or anything. Uh, the other thing is, is their reaction going to hurt your feelings in any way? Cause yeah. If for they, sure. I mean, some they might laugh at you, and if you don't want to deal with that, you don't have to. Yeah, you could be laughed at, you could um, be yelled at, you could be prayed anything. for, yeah, <laughs> you prayed could for anything. And if you think your best friend's going to laugh at you, then maybe that's I don't know. Great well, you yeah, maybe friend, get a new best friend. Yeah, yeah maybe get a new <laughs> best friend. But then also the other the other thing is that like I I was thinking on the way over is we think about people. I, I hear people oftentimes say they came out and oh so and so just didn't understand. They just con- consistently are like choosing to mis, uh, misrepresent, like ignore the things that I'm telling you about Satanism. Right. But there are people out there that it's not that they're angry. It's not that they're laughing at you. It's not that they are anything like that. They are legitimately terrified. There are people that are going sure. to be terrified. Um, if they are a religious person at all, Yeah. there's a chance of that. Although I, I think that a lot of people are also reasonable people that know that the Satanic temple exists and it's... Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't have these conversations about Satanism or or that type of stuff with you know random people out there in the world very often. For me, when it usually happens is always around Satanic Delco doing something. We're doing either um some sort of a charity action or something in the public and it gets spread around on Instagram or Facebook some sort of media outlet. And that's where I get exposed to the outside world's reaction to what we're doing, either Satanic Delco specifically or Satanism generally. And that's where I get to see all these different reactions. And there are those, you get a wide spectrum. You get the, oh, these guys are just being edgy, leave them alone. Or everything in between up to the people that are terrified. Yeah. And angry, you know, and they are intense sometimes, and they are sincere, man. They, they really have a strong yeah. reaction. Yeah, and to that, I I know it it can hurt you as a Satanist if you tell someone that you care about that you're a Satanist and they don't understand. Right. That might be painful for you, but you did choose to identify with a religion that is already terrifying to people. <laughs> it's already the bad guy in, in right. there. It's the most evil of evils in, in all of the stories they've ever heard in their lifetime. Yeah, the worst guy ever. <laughs> and you're going, yeah, I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, uh, I want to, I'm a, I'm a Satanist. Yeah. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, I know that we all know yeah. what Satanist means. Yeah. The hope is that even if someone isn't immediately on board, you know, especially if they do come from any sort of particularly Christian background or belief system, the hope is that you can give them a fairly brief explanation of like, hold on, we don't worship the devil and eat animals and stuff, you know, um, at least not, you know, while they're alive. (laughs) But sometimes that works. Sometimes it's just not going to work. Right. There are some people that are never going to understand. They never, they don't want to understand they're just not going to hear it. Uh, another consideration, I guess, is is if they're going to find out either way, um, you might want to get ahead of it. Right. Uh, if you live with a person, I'm not saying it's not doable. It's totally doable. But if you live with a person and you suspect that they might find out that you're a Satanist one way <laughs> or another, definitely think about it first, but realize that they might find out. And uh, maybe it'll be better. Maybe it would be better if you told them about it first and Maybe it won't be. Maybe maybe that would be a problem for you. But uh, alternatively, they can find your altar and your... <laughs> right. Um, yeah, they see know, enough satanic shit laying around the house, they're going to eventually start to ask some questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, or have some feelings about it. Yeah, for sure. So you might choose to get ahead of it if it is a concern for you. And then the uh, my last consideration is like, as far as person-to-person considerations go is is... Who is that person going to tell? Oh yeah, because you don't want to. You don't want to tell somebody that's going to go spread it around to everybody if that's not what you want. Right? Yeah. If, if especially if you are generally trying to keep it quiet uh, from most people, yeah, you yeah. want to make sure you know that you can generally trust the person. Yeah, and it might it might be because they don't know that it's 
private if you especially if you don't tell them right um or they don't if people think if people don't think it's that big of a deal they often aren't going to keep that secret for you even if you tell them it's a secret yeah i think that happens a lot my mom will tell she, the things that she thinks are casual conversation are <sighs> she talks you know, about you i know she does stuff. she spreads your business mom. around everybody goes to her mom's <laughs> house on the weekend and they all just sit around and gossip about each other yeah <laughs> um you know I guess that's what families do. They gossip about each other. But I guess. It kills me. I don't want anybody to know anything about my life <laughs> most of the Why time. Why is that? I don't know. It just, I, I don't love it. Yeah. But I, if I could tell a personal story, but I remember when I was like, but oh, when boy. I was like 11 or whatever and I got my period, wow. I remember hearing my mom, I, I would get dropped off at my dad's work and my mom would be, somebody would say like, wow, they've gotten so tall. Some woman and my mom will be like, yeah, well, she's only going to grow like two more inches because of some rumor that you only grow two more inches after that. Wait. And I was like, she's telling everybody I have my period because they said, <laughs> they said, oh, she's gotten so tall. Right. <laughs> and so it goes <laughs> that once you get your period, you only grow two more inches. Oh, that's what my mom heard. Is that is that a scientific fact I, I, of any kind? I highly doubt it. I've never heard that. I haven't done any research. But yeah, she's taken any opportunity, and any And you get comment. your period. I've never had a period. You get it around roughly 11? I, people get it at all kinds of ages. I, right. I, I don't know how old I was. I think I you think still I grow was, after 11. A good bit. <laughs> I was right? thinking that too. Did I say what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I hope 11 is the right number. Let me. I'm going to do some math in my head. I don't even know when a period happens. Yeah, it happens around then. People get it at all kinds of ranges, but middle school, right. usually. Some people get it young. <laughs> Let's is, talk about periods a little content. longer. Uh, this is the content <laughs> you're looking for. Yeah. The point was, yeah, the point was moms will tell any, anything to anybody. They have no, right. they don't care. You are their little child and they want to tell you or everyone, everything about your life. Right. Uh, and they love, they know it's embarrassing and they like to do it anyway. They so. like to embarrass you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so consideration. Okay. What's next? Uh, situational considerations. We touched on some of them already. A big one for me is if you feel like explaining it, you don't owe everybody an explanation on all details of your life. And if you tell them that they are, that you're a Satanist, they're going to have questions. And if you don't feel like answering them, maybe you shouldn't tell them. It is a hundred percent your right to end or pause a conversation wherever you want to. If you want to say, uh, you know what? I don't feel like talking about it anymore right now, or I'm not comfortable talking about it. That is your right, and and that's fine, and and someone should probably respect if you want to do that. However, be realistic about going into it when you tell someone, especially if this comes out of the clear blue sky, and you say, oh, by the way, I am a Satanist. Yeah, they're going to probably have questions. I would. You know, like, of course, yeah. someone is I going to do. have questions. Somebody says they're a Satanist. I got questions. There's questions. Yeah, <laughs> that, that doesn't questions. mean anything. I, I won't get all off topic, but we've been talking a bit recently. I know I've had the conversation several times online about the idea that Satanism, the word, doesn't mean anything really nowadays. For some people, you say, I'm a Satanist. That means I am really into Anton LaVey, and I stick to his Satanic Bible, and that is Satanism, and that's all it is. That's what it means. For other people, you say, I'm a Satanist, and that means... I'm a part of this political activist group, you know, and and we do this. And then for some people, Satanist means they actually worship the devil somewhere, uh, you know, at some flaming altar. I don't know. Oh, yeah. And so it really, there's a lot of questions, even amongst Satanists, yeah. when you hear the term Satanist. Yeah, like, we've, we've been dealing with that a lot at the the craft shows. Um, oh, yes. Lately. Oh, yes. Somebody will come up to you, and, and they're also a Satanist, and then they start talking about some absolutely crazy yeah. Um, no offense if you're a theistic Satanist, but reconsider maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Crazy yeah. Stuff. So yeah, no matter what, expect questions. And, you know, it's not like a rule you are demanded to answer these things, but, you know, be realistic about it, I would say. Expect some questions and be prepared for at least a little conversation. Uh, at work, I would say if you're – personal advice. Joseph's advice is maybe don't get a job if you want to tell them you're Satanist. <laughs> yeah. Never <laughs> but, work for anyone else. Right. That's really my advice right. to everybody is, uh, uh, make your own job. Yeah. Uh, but my <laughs> advice is if you believe that your job may be contingent on you not being a Satanist, then maybe don't tell them that you're a Satanist. Yes. And 
And there's also, I guess, some other things there. Uh, don't share things on Facebook if they are Facebook friends with you. That whole, man, that concept, it, it is fairly foreign to me. Like I said, like I don't fuck with that. But it it genuinely upsets me. Like I hate the idea of it. It makes me so uncomfortable. Like I just imagine I'm going to some job. I'm going to my store that I work in or my cube that I sit in all day or whatever. And you just know I can't. I can't let this out. I can't say it. I can't let anybody know who I am or they'll take away my livelihood. I'd be so annoyed and pissed and just frustrated all the time. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See, it doesn't bother me that much that I can't tell my work that I'm a Satanist. You know, if you so. were to say to your boss, you have a fairly, you know, good relationship with your immediate boss, I think, right? I think so if you were to say to her, Tell her one way or another that you're a Satanist and, and give her, you know, a brief explanation of what that means if she didn't know. Do you think it would have negative ramifications? You know, I don't know if it would for my immediate boss. I don't know if it would for anybody that I work for necessarily right. and in, in in my job at all. I don't think that it But it's would not matter. worth risking I, it's it. It's not worth risking it. It's not worth more so the the gossip and the drama <laughs> that it might cause with certain coworkers. Right. You suspect it would just become the talk of the office. Oh, my God. Although my office has got some crazy stories yeah. that I cannot tell on, tell them. <laughs> on this podcast. Tell them, please. But they are insane. They are like, I cannot believe that <laughs> that the things that apparently people can get away with. And um, not I work in Philadelphia, but my there's also an office in Harrisburg. And the things that I hear from the people in Harrisburg. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. They're getting wild um, out getting there. Getting wild out there. Hmm. Um, so, so anyways, uh, my, my advice here is your coworkers are not your friends. <laughs> you can be friends with your coworkers maybe, but they are your coworkers first. Right. Um, and I know that that is hard for some people. I know people love to have work friends. You know, you got your work friends. Yeah. They are your work friends. Right. And if they want to be your friends in your personal life, that's, that's fine too. But consider that they are your coworkers first. Yeah. And this, and this could, the same principle applies to anything we're talking about coming out as a Satanist, but, you know, we all have any number of things in our personal life. Oh, by the way, I like to do mushrooms all the time, you know, like, you know, somebody might not like that or whatever. Right. All right. What else? At home, we talked about a lot of this stuff already, but um, some considerations are if you're if you're in danger of, of physical or emotional trauma, if you were at risk of losing your housing, if you were. Yeah. Yeah. We've heard just within our group in Satanic Delco over time, we've heard plenty of instances where people don't feel like they can tell their immediate family because, you know, my dad will kick me out or they're going to freak out and I can't afford to move out of the house. You know, it really. You know, they whether it would play out that way or not, they sincerely feel that they would be in some level of, you know, life danger. You know, maybe not like physical harm, but their life would suffer. Yeah, if they were to come out. Yeah, and I know I can think of at least one of those people that still wanted to come out to their. I don't know if they ever did, but they wanted to come out mm -hmm. to their household uh, because, and they really felt like they were in danger if they did that, but they really felt like they needed to come out. Yeah. Um, so if that is you, I really just make sure you're making an informed decision there. Yeah. And, I don't and know. maybe, maybe have a backup plan or something. Like if you're going to live on the streets. Yeah. I mean, really consider, of course. I mean, some of this stuff, I feel like it should go without saying, but we got to say it. We'd have really to, because this is hard. a real, this is a real conversation that I had with the person. So. Yeah. Like think hard about this. And it is. You know, I'll tell you a story in a second, but you really do have to consider those things, uh, obviously. You know, if if you suspect that your life might be sincerely impacted by letting that information out to people, it's a tough balance sometimes. On one hand, it's eating away at you. You want to tell for whatever reason. You feel like you must. Um, but on the other end of it, you've got these repercussions that might come. Um, I can't remember if I've talked about this on the podcast explicitly or not. I know I've told the story to lots of people, I guess, but there was one time, and it's not about Satanism, but I was just reminded because I used the random example of using mushrooms. <laughs> um, and so if you follow along with the podcast, you know that I occasionally enjoy mushrooms. I don't do them very often, but I do love them. And, you know, once or twice or three times, maybe in a year, I will have some and enjoy it. But I do love the devil's lettuce a whole lot, and that's a pretty regular part of my life. But 
for the longest part of my life, the first 36 or 37 years, I didn't use any substances. And so I've got a son. And with a son often comes a mother. And uh, she and I aren't together and haven't been for many, many years, but we obviously still have a relationship where we're co-parents to our son. And for the most part, that goes fine. It can be annoying at times, but okay, we get by. And when I started to use these substances, cannabis and mushrooms, uh, and DMT sprinkled in there if you really want to get into it, when I started, I kind of knew that I wasn't going to tell her about it. And over time, you know, I considered it here and there because, again, I have that kind of personality. It's not like she needs to know for any functional reason. Nothing's going to happen. You know, there's no benefit to her knowing for me. But just the idea that I, I could be open about it to everyone else in the world, everyone on my social media could know, my friends could know, everybody in my life could know, and I didn't care. And they pretty much did know except her. She didn't know. And the reason was I thought that because we didn't always have a, you know, super sweet peachy relationship, my concern was that if I tell her this, she's going to have some negative reaction to it. And if she were ever in the mood, she would maybe use that as ammunition against me in a way that could involve my son. You know, like, oh, this, he's on fucking drugs. Don't let the kid with him. You know what I mean? And obviously that's not something I could let happen. I didn't want that to happen. My son is always in my life. You know, we, we split time with him pretty 50, 50. And there's been times over the years where he was, you know, mostly just with me. And so the idea that something could interfere with that was really troubling to me. I, I, I was scared about it. But the longer that went on, the worse I felt about it. I, I just couldn't stomach the idea that I have to hide this, I don't know, fairly innocuous thing about my life. I had to hide it from someone and let them have this power over me. I had this fear, and it just ate away at me. And so I finally couldn't do it anymore. I finally had to have a conversation and say, okay, look, I'm coming over. I'm coming over to your house. Now, mind you, I had never even been in her house. <laughs> this was the first time I'd ever had a reason to even come in. And I came in and I said, all right, uh, I just kind of blurted it out, I think. I was like, here's the deal. I do weed and mushrooms and DMT sometimes. And she did not have a very great positive reaction to it, as I expected. Um, it wasn't great. And in the few months, maybe, I don't exactly remember, it was a while back, in the few months or so after that, occasionally she would bring it up in a, you know, annoying way. You know, what are you stoned over there? Burr, burr, burr. You know, um, and I just, you know, I tried not to let myself get drawn into an argument or anything weird about it. Uh, and I would sort of joke about it here and there because if I'm being real honest, my true feeling about using those substances is that there's nothing wrong with it. I don't feel like a bad guy because I use weed. I feel like a better guy because I use weed. It helps me. It helps my life a little bit. It helps me feel a little better or enjoy Black Sabbath even a little bit more, you know? And so now that quite some time has passed, I never experienced any real significant detrimental effects of saying it, and I felt so much better getting it off my chest. Like really, it was it was really weighing on me. And uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm way off topic on this tangent now, but it's similar. You know, that was just, hi, I'm a weed head instead of, hi, I'm a Satanist. She already knows I'm a Satanist, and whatever she feels about that is what it is. I don't care. Um, and I guess she's gotten over the fact that I'm an adult who uses weed and stuff. So, yeah. so I know not everybody, again, can be in that position, but I just had to. I don't I just couldn't live with it anymore. It really really bothered me. And so I did have to consider the repercussions. I really thought like is she really going to do this? Am I going to have to fight? Am I going to have to fight for my son? Like that was a real concern. Luckily it didn't come to that at all, but it was a real worry. Sorry for that yeah. crazy tangent. No, that's guys. okay. It's <laughs> it's sort of related to my next topic. Um which you will have a little bit more experience with mm -hmm. than I do because 
Uh, the next like situational coming out you might have to do is in dating and relationships. And my experience dating as a Satanist or has exclusively been like the only person that I've dated since I've been a Satanist is also a Satanist. It wasn't really a oh, thing so, that... So you're saying... I've like, never had to tell somebody that I was a Satanist. Right. They know I'm a Satanist. They are also a Satanist, you know? Right. Um, so that's not really been a consideration for me. But You've if never you had are, to put out there like on a date, like, oh, by the way, right. I'm into Satan. Yes. Right. Which that's a real consideration that I guess there's two perspectives is do you want to get it out of the way real early uh, and do you want to maybe ease them into it? I'm a fan of getting it all out there right away. Yeah. Would right you away. do it? I would maybe put it in the dating profile, you know, so that, you know, before, before you even uh, like have a conversation with a person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe um, so. I mean, why not? Right. Anything about you that um, might stand out that you think is, could be unusual to the average person out there and they might have some, you know, significant feeling about it. I feel like you should get it out there as soon as possible. Save yourself yeah. the trouble. I, I think so. I'd say that's my perspective too. Yeah. I would put it out there immediately because yeah, why go it's, on it's going to be a dates. problem. I don't want to. Yeah. Um, I know some people also have the perspective that you want to like get, make sure that they get to know you a little bit first and then, you know, spring it on them later. Right. Uh, yeah. That's, that's valid. Um, if somebody has met you, they get to see your personality and, you know, how you interact with them and the world and, you know, just get a real vibe on you one-on-one -on -one for a while. If they were going to have an issue or a surprise or whatever about Satanism, maybe that would ease their reaction yeah. once the information came. That That is valid. That's certainly possible, and I could see how that would help. Um, so I guess my way is just fuck yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you you've been a Satanist for many years, so you've sure. probably dated many people in that time that were not Satanist. I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't. Hmm. I mean, there were years in the middle. You know, I was a Satanist. I would have used the word Satanist when I was young, as a teenager, up through you know whatever year, uh, and then for some of the middle years there when I had kind of gotten a little turned away from the Church of Satan vibe, the Anton LaVey's whole deal, the Satanic Bible, I wasn't super keen on all of that stuff, as some of you guys may have learned through the podcast. But so, so in some of those middle years, I may have gone with atheist, although when you're an atheist, for some reason, it doesn't feel as important to say to someone, because atheism doesn't... You know, if you run into the right Christian, atheism is offensive to them. Yeah, I mean, but for you, most people, it's not. If you're the right atheist, it's a real. <laughs> I mean, right. there's stuff like that kind of atheist too. Yeah, um, but when you say Satan to people, there's a higher likelihood of yeah a strong feeling about it. Yeah, I so I guess some other ways that I've seen people do it are um, if they are if they don't want to put Satanist in their bio. Yeah. They, you could, I think you can also specify, I've never been on any of these apps, but I think you can specify it's important to me that the person not be religious. Uh, right. Yes. That that's might true. be a consideration, uh, the, an alternative to, to weed out the Christians and stuff before, before they come yes. after you. Yes. Yeah. I believe that is a thing, right? Like if you are religious, you can hit a button and then all, the other side, they can hit a button that says, I don't want people to hit that button. Yeah. And I would hit that button because what are the odds that those people are hitting? I'm very religious because they're a Satanist. I know. Probably I low. I don't think so either. I, I might be a wise ass and hit that button, <laughs> but most people probably don't. If you're, if you're looking, if you're legitimately looking for love and not looking to troll people on, <laughs> right. on Tinder, then you might, you might, or I mean, I don't know if you're looking for a hookup, that's a different story, but yeah, um, we don't really need to discuss religion yeah, at all. There's no, <laughs> that's not even a factor. Yeah. yeah. So if we're just looking for a hookup, you can love Jesus yeah. all you fucking want. If you're looking for, you know, some kind of a relationship with a person, <laughs> yeah, uh, you probably wouldn't say I'm religious cause I'm a Satanist. Cause you're gonna, you're gonna go on a lot of dates with a lot of right. Probably Christian yeah. people. All right. What's another situation? Um, the other situation uh, we talked about a little bit is just generally walking around in life. You know, I don't look particularly satanic. I don't think. I think I look like a pretty average 
gal, you know, um, other than my occasional satanic hoodie and small necklace. Right. So I don't know what it's like to walk around looking like a Satanist. Uh, I hear stories um, constantly about people that cannot walk around in life, uh, you know, wearing satanic imagery and stuff because they live in a place where that is uh, going to subject them to harassment or worse. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whatever a Satanist looks like, you know, the stereotypical uh, goth, just whatever generally right. alternative type of situation. I don't really look like that. I look like an older dude yeah. walking around with a black t-shirt, you know, yeah. and depending on how closely you look at my t-shirt, you might see some Satan shit. But yeah. other than that, I just look like a dude walking around. But as a youngster, I I did look more whatever alternative, you know, I had the long black hair and shit and, and I definitely got... I got reactions from that. I, I remember I would get followed around in particularly the record store when I would go in the mall. I'd go in the music store with my backpack that I always had on. I wasn't really stealing anything, at least not at that time. And I would be followed around um, yeah. for sure. And I definitely got harassed by police yeah. when I was a youngster, I think, just because of the way I looked. You know, I wasn't really out there committing any crimes right. or doing anything wild. So if you already look like an alternative person, there's a chance you're used to those kind of dirty looks to begin with. Alternatively, if you look like an alternative person, if you're a goth person, if you're, you know, a heavy metal person, it might not be much of a surprise to people when you (laughs) You say I'm a Satanist. You sounded like my great aunt Kirsten when you just said that. I I didn't know what to call. You're some kind of a heavy metal person. Person, I didn't know what to call them. I was like, "What's a heavy? What? Are, what's like a a, a metalhead? A metalhead? Headbanger? Okay. If you're, um, <laughs> do they still use those terms? Because that's what they called us when I was a kid. Oh, um, are people still headbangers and metalheads? Still, still self-identify with that term. Yeah. But I don't think people are like calling the other people that. Right. Um. Yeah. It was kind of. It was almost. It's kind of derogatory when I was a kid. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that sounds ridiculous to me. I, I, know. I, I might be way wrong. I'm, I'm quite old. People might be listening, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people still call us headbang, but I've only ever like I hear people call themselves metalheads, right? And I hear people call themselves less often headbangers or whatever, right? Yeah, maybe headbangers but, an old thing. We had yeah. headbangers ball and shit back yeah. in the day, but <laughs> wow, like I don't look at a person. I don't know metal. Like that's a, a self identifier. Right. You're just a. I don't know. You're just a person. I don't think. Yeah. I, I might be wrong because again, we live in. Well, look, Del- times Delaware change County, so but, quickly. That I remember um, a time as a kid. When the even though I'd never experienced it, but I was familiar with people who had a real strong feeling about somebody with tattoos. Yeah, like this fucking tattooed up. They got just you know they got three arm tattoos, and it's like, oh my god, are they a are they like a violent biker gang or something? Like yeah. you know, yeah. And like nowadays, like even from when I was in like middle school to today, like alternative is like the new. Tr- it's trendy now. You know, it's super common. It's super yeah. common, and I would even say like. Dressing like a, an alternative person, a goth person, dressing witchy in any way. That's not necessarily outing yourself. Um, no. If you, if you think that. I've heard people describe it that way before. And I, if you feel that way, that's, that's valid. But I certainly don't think that that is outing yourself. If you wear pentagrams or pentacles or whatever, they can be satanic to you. And right. to everybody else, you bought them at Hot Topic, you know? Right. Um, well, and, you know, it, it just reminds me in Satanic Delco. Just lately, we've been watching all of the Paradise Lost oh, yeah. documentaries. We're watching the four films that document the journey of the West Memphis Three, which is a story that began back in the early 90s out there in West Memphis, Arkansas, right? Arkansas? Ar- uh, yeah, West. I think so. Um, and so in the case of those kids, you know, they were just some teenage kids and a couple of them, at least, were into wearing black. They like Metallica. They had some little occult books in the house. Basic teenager shit into some Metallica. And the people in that town lost their goddamn minds. When you hear the attorneys and some of the witnesses and stuff from the testimony in that first film, it is the definition of satanic panic. I mean, they're like... This kid is obviously involved in satanic cults. He's got a book. There's a pentagram on it. We got to put him in jail. And so, you know, of course, times have changed. But I bet in a lot of places, times haven't changed all that much. Yeah. I bet. I I mean, I'm very curious what West Memphis is like. I don't ever want to go find out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, it's it's real for some people. Uh, but even even if I was gonna say, even if you're not gothy, like you could still tarot imagery. Tarot's not really satanic. Yeah, pentagrams, ghosts, like band merchandise. Yeah. You know? What if you're like, just a kid who hears ghost on the radio and thinks it sounds cool, and you get yeah. into it, and you buy a ghost T-shirt, or you want to go see ghost in concert? You're good. This fucking inverted crosses and wild satanic yeah. pope looking shit everywhere yeah you know there's a mom out there that's gonna get real upset um, what the hell were we know, talking about we were talking about considerations that <laughs> things that might be on your mind when you're considering right coming out or is this gonna put me in danger um yeah what's my what's my situation like at work at home at in, in my in my location in the world yeah. i mean if you live in salem i don't know I would imagine you could walk around. If you live in Salem, this. you're fine. Yeah. If you pro- probably, if, well, you know. wait. You know what? I say that, and generally that appears to be true. I think. I think everybody, you know, at this point, most people have. They know you do that shit in Salem. It's fine. If you're oh. into that, you probably just go to Salem. But we know that whenever it was last year, yeah. some nutball in a god shirt went and tried to light up the damn Satanic Temple headquarters yeah. on fire. Yeah. So, yeah, so, sure, the Satanic Temple is going to get more attention because they're like a whole organization with a big, you know, fancy black fucking building in Salem. And so they, they've they made a target of themselves to crazy people that want to do something yeah. like that. But a crazy person like that could strike anywhere, I guess. You yeah. know, what else have we got? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about support for being in the closet, ways to express yourself and to practice your Satanism when you can't come out, when you can't tell the world or you can't tell the people you live with or the people that you work with. Yeah. Um, and and the first thing that I, I have commented on is generally Satanic communities. If you live in an environment that might be hostile to you because of your Satanism, there are these Satanic communities, both in person and online, that can provide a safe space for you to practice your Satanism. And you can do so discreetly or anonymously if you wish. You don't That's right. necessarily need to, um, yeah, first we have, of all... We have tons of people in our group. I will never know their real name. Right. You know? Um, <laughs> and that's so, okay. Um, but these places, these places, especially if you are participating online, um, and I, I think that a lot of groups you can participate online. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be an in-person you know, relationship that you have with people. Mm-hmm. Um, but especially online, it's very easy to be anonymous. You don't have to show your face. You don't have to uh, tell them your name. Um, we've we've met and anonymous. hung out with members of our group in person. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not using their real name. Oh, yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. You know? For sure. But these places provide a place for open satanic discussion and expression that you might not be able to do elsewhere. You're not going to um, get that in your regular pre-existing yeah. friend group, most right. likely. If you happen to have been friends with 10 people that are Satanists already, okay, lucky you. Right. But in most cases, you know, we are obviously a small minority of people that identify this way. And so, yeah, if you just want to chat with other people, hey, what's your experience been like? What kind of books do you know about? What should I do? Hey, you want to hang out? Let's, you know, whatever. That's where you can find that. Yeah, and it might depend on the group that you're in, but ritual might not be accessible to you as an individual person. But you can join a ritual with a group. You can, if you can travel in person, just for a little group ritual, you don't have to do anything for that. You can experience that that part of Satanism. Yeah. Um, If you, you know, you want to talk about Satanic concepts or, or even just like. I don't know, a band you like that no one else cares about. Like it's, yeah. there's personal well, and friendships. It, and We've talked so many different ways on here over time about the effects or benefits of religious community right. generally. And so it's, I don't know, I've never really been a part of any other type of religious community, but I imagine it's similar in some ways. You know, it's just a place where at the very least, you know, of course, Satanists are very different. There's a broad spectrum of types of people, personalities, you name it. But at the very least, the one thing we know when we first say hello that we have in common is that we identify as Satanists or in the ballpark at least. And so we get to do all the other stuff that we do that just sort of builds naturally on that. In Satanic Delco every day, we have you know, whatever random conversations about whatever we get up to. A lot of times it can involve Satanism, 
but just as much it's not. It's about real life, just any part of life. My job, my boyfriend, my mom, my vacation, whatever. Our pets, we love sharing pet information. Yeah, um, and sometimes you need you just need advice on something and you can't ask anybody in your in your real life if you want to call yeah. it, if you want to differentiate yeah. <laughs> real life and satanic life. That's a whole uh group of people that are legitimately great friends. Yeah. But uh, you know, different and separate from your <laughs> your yeah. everyday life friends. And it also um, kind of it kind of encourages more social interaction, I think, in a way. Like you might have a real active social group of friends just in person in your neighborhood or, or whatever in your life. Um, maybe, but not everybody does. And I find that as you get older, there's less of that for mm-hmm. less people. You know, if you're forty five. How often are you just going out to hang out with a group of 10 of your friends to hang out? You know, yeah. not as much as when you were 19, yeah. I bet. And at least, again, I can't I can't speak for other types of groups. For our group, we know that we always have a line of communication, you know, different ones, Facebook, Discord, this or that. Every Monday, we know there's a place to get together and catch up with people. You know, we do our Zooms. We have our movie nights. We're doing the West Memphis 3 shit. It's just all these opportunities that are presented to you based on the fact that you're just in a religious community. Yeah. And you know, one thing also that I I started to get to, I guess, is that I've always found it sometimes easier to open up to strangers about things Mm -hmm. than than it is to people in my life sometimes. Sure. Um, And I've heard similar things from others. That's why talking to a therapist is a thing. So you start, you start as strangers and you, can reestablish your, it's like you're a new person. Like no one knows who you are. (laughs) You can share stuff that you might be embarrassed of for no good reason in your real life or or something like that. And you get to know people and it almost feels like you can be, to me, it felt like I could be a little bit more real with Mm. these people than, than the people that I've already have these established relationships with. Yeah. Um, And I've heard. It's true. There's less, there's less to lose. Yeah. And I've heard people also uh, I think it happens a lot. Like people say when they join the group and then as we get to know them that it has, it's helped them to, you know, open up more in their real lives versus their satanic lives. Um, but <laughs> the, that, their fake satanic lives. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it's, I don't want to say practice, but if you're not used to opening up in that way, if you're not used to being social, if you, um, Really, you, if you want to be a more social person, but you're not ready to do that yet, like yeah. joining a whole new group of like satanic people online too. It's, you know, you open up online and then you meet them in person later yeah. on. Well, and, um, and because it's a satanic community in our case, and you know that the people you're joining when you get there are also satanists, there's a higher likelihood that they've experienced some of the same ideas and things that you might be going through. Like, oh, I don't know who I can talk to about this. I don't know if I can come out about this. Well, now there's a whole fucking group of people that, you know, can maybe help out or at least you can get some feedback or learn from their experiences. Yeah, Yeah, they might be total strangers, but you know one thing about them and that is that they are a Satanist and that they probably align with a similar kind of Satanism to you. And in my experience, people are pretty open. Yeah. Like people will share. Yeah. You know, they'll give advice, they'll share stories, you know. For sure. Um, I I guess I would note, though, the importance of setting boundaries with your satanic friends mm-hmm. still the same way you would with any of your other friends. Um, if you are in the closet, if you don't want your real life friends to know that you're a satanist. Uh, make it known. Make it known. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not because people are out to get you. Uh, it's because, you know, for me or for Joseph or whoever... It might not be that big of a deal to us, and it might not cross our minds that it's, you know, uh, a thing that is a secret for you. Or especially if you're very involved in your satanic group or your satanic persona, mm-hmm. sometimes I think we forget that that doesn't mean that you're as involved and openly satanic right. in your life. Yeah, you might be real um, outgoing and free amongst us, Yeah, but that doesn't mean um, you are out there in the... The rest so, of the world. Yeah. So make it known. Um, tell them, don't tag me on social media. Don't, please don't post photos with me. Right. It is your responsibility, I think, you know, to make, to make those things known. Again, people are not out to get you. And if people are conscious and aware, uh, they might be cautious about that to, be, to begin with. But yeah, sometimes people are people. We forget. We, we're not paying attention, whatever happens. So, it's definitely your responsibility to make that known a little bit. If you have boundaries, you need to communicate them. 
one thing people do sometimes is they'll create a whole separate Facebook page. Yeah. Um, to join. Yeah. I've seen that um, a lot. Yeah. To join a, a Facebook group or whatever. Yeah. Um, that completely segregates your personal life from your satanic life. Uh, I see that a lot. Yeah. I think that's, I, um, I get a little sketched out once in a while. Someone will come to join satanic Delco and I look at their thing and it says, uh, this Facebook account was started 18 minutes ago. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to, yeah. normally that will sketch me out a little bit, but I have to keep in mind that yeah. there might be a real good reason yeah. that that person is doing this under a brand new Facebook account. Although you, you could know? you could make a comment th- somewhere in there to say, "Hey, hey, man, I just made this just for." <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, I'm that'd be a, helpful if I'm anybody ever does that. Or troll or whatever. <laughs> right. Um, I, I don't speak for everybody, but especially if you have a, a satanic profile, I think people are pretty open. I think it's pretty easy to make friends that way. People will friend me sometimes, and I'm like, I don't know who that person is, but I guess they're a satanist. You <laughs> I know, <guess. laughs> uh, I don't accept friend requests if I don't know who you are at all. But you know, I get them a lot. Right. Um, yeah, and then another thing we, we talked about a little bit is you can establish a Satanim, which is a satanic pseudonym. Yes, um, of course. A lot of people do that. Right. Uh, and that not only is that a way to maintain some anonymity, but it's also a way to express yourself a little bit. Um, if you pick a cool name, you could sound cool as shit. Uh, if you pick a, you know, yeah, you could pick a meaningful name. If you really identify with Lilith, you could pick Lilith. Yeah, I um, wish there were. You know, if them. I'm being honest, I wish there were a more variety. I wish there were more too. I'll tell you. Listen, you I know, was if say, I see you. one more, you know, Damien McLucifer face or whatever, <laughs> you know, it's like, come on. There's a lot of Liliths. There's a lot of. Uh, um, there's a lot of Damien's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's another one that I always see. Yeah. There's a lot out there. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, do what Levi's, you got to do. There's a lot of Levi's. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if you are particularly identify with any characters from satanic literature or the Bible or figures, Anton or or Aleister Crowley, you you can pick one of those names. That's almost telling us a little bit about yourself just with your name. Sort of, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that allows you to maintain anonymity both online and in person. Like you said – there are people in our group that we have we do not know their name. We've met them in person. We've hung out. Mm-hmm. Don't know their real don't know their real name in life. And who gives a um, shit? Yeah, I don't. I don't care. give a shit. I don't care at all. Yeah, if that's the and name you like, we'll y- fucking call you that name. You know, I I'll also I was thinking about this earlier. I don't have a Satan name. I yeah. just joined as Kirsten, and I always um, sometimes I think it's <laughs> sometimes I don't love Satan names. I think if if you're I think if you're a leader of a congregation or something like that, I don't love necessarily yes. the Satanims, although I don't know if I, I can justify that. There are so many reasons for your safety or your job and stuff like that that we we discussed that um, that you might not want your name to be out there. Sure. Um, but when I like joined and first became active, I, that's, that was sort of my mindset. As I don't. I don't really have anything to hide. I'm going to be, you know, cursed and like I didn't, I didn't even. It didn't even cross my mind, you know, when I joined Satanic Delco or when I started talking elsewhere um about my satanism uh but now i almost i feel like i missed an opportunity like now I'm <laughs> to have one yeah now i'm established like i'm just kirsten <laughs> right i could have picked a cool fucking name yeah and uh, i'm sorry <laughs> you feel it's it. a little yeah. boring uh yeah um <laughs> yeah it never it never occurred to me honestly yeah. it never fucking occurred to me yeah. once people have actually suggested that my name isn't my real name it seems like a fake name <laughs> that's yeah. funny it never even occurred to me that someone would think that yeah. well joseph is like a you know a biblical name it sort is. of and also like a cult leader type name okay thank and, you um you know to go by joseph yeah and, i mean uh, it is my name yeah. and then rose it's a good last name you know yeah. it's a yeah um you just well, have a good name in general i guess so thank um, you to my father i yeah. have no idea where he is <laughs> <laughs> well so yeah i'm just kirsten all right We've got more. What's next? Um, okay, yeah. Some ways to express yourself and practice your Satanism without outing yourself, without needing to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the the big ways that I the big ways I think a lot of people do it is through personal rituals or affirmations. You, you those don't need to be public events. You don't need to tell anybody about them. If you live somewhere that you can practice privately, you can. Do ritual privately, and you don't have to worry about uh, anybody. Yeah, and you can, out. you know, because you, ritual is so open. Yeah, it's so personal and and flexible. You could, if you're if you're a seventeen year old kid mm-hmm. 
who thinks you are into Satanism and you want to experiment or, or uh, try some rituals, you can certainly create a situation, create a ritual that you can perform by yourself sort of quietly in your room and not draw a lot of attention to yourself. That's yeah. that's very possible. Yeah, and it doesn't have to ritual doesn't have to be magical if you don't align with And it with doesn't that. always have to be fire and shouting hail Satan. Yeah. It doesn't have to um, be. ritual could be, you know, it could be I'm going to light a candle and say hail Satan to myself. Yeah. It could be anything you want it to be. Um one thing I know some people do is um at the end of the day uh, they like to look back and reflect on the day and and their behaviors throughout the day, mm-hmm. but to just just take a moment to reflect. You don't even have to write anything down or say anything out loud. Uh, you don't have to light any candles or or sprinkle any <laughs> dust. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, um, um, <laughs> I like that. It's whatever you sprinkle some magic sprinkle dust. Some dust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you might look in the mirror and say affirmations to yourself. Sure. Um, you know, I, we, you have a whole episode about about ritual and and self-empowerment and um and and go listen to that episode if you would like to hear more but that is is a way that you can you know express yourself and practice privately at home yeah another thing i wrote down is decor that you choose to decorate with Mm. um i think is a fun way to express yourself again if you live privately you can do so privately but your decoration need not be big inverted crosses and pentagrams all over the house yeah. um i like the idea of uh like forbidden fruit artwork sure like apples and pomegranates and stuff i love pomegranates um serpents yeah you know? and look you could even i i love this type of imagery you could get a standard traditional portrait of Adam and Eve in the garden, yeah. you know, with the forbidden fruit there and the whole thing, maybe a serpent visible. And look, that's a biblical yeah, image, you know what I mean? And Satan is in the eye of the beholder in that case. Yeah, I'm going to look at that picture differently than some people I've would. Told, I've told people that before, too, like biblical imagery. Yeah. You know, you could have a little picture of Lucifer fallen from heaven or yeah. or Adam and Eve or whatever. You could have a poster NTL. of the uh, NHL hockey player Miroslav Shatan. He's got Satan written big on the back of his jersey, just hang that up, and it's a satanic decoration. Yeah, so, is he retired? Know, Do you know I, who he is? I've I don't know you, if he's I've playing anymore. I've heard talk about him before, but I don't know yeah. who he is. No. It's fun. You see a guy skating by, and it says Satan right is on his it jersey. Spelled, it's spelled Satan. Yeah, it's just yeah. Satan. That's fun. Yeah. Um, whatever your artwork means to you doesn't have to mean the same thing to everybody else. If your parents are going to be real upset by some Satan stuff on your wall... <laughs> I bet you they'd love to see some Adam and Eve. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I bet you they'd love to. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, tattoos I should, if you man, want. I should find a big, beautiful old Adam and Eve portrait. I would love to get like a, man, yeah. I'm going to look into it. All right. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Tattoos and stuff. Those are pretty common. Like tattoo, like those p- apples and pomegranates and snakes and yeah. stuff like that are very common tattoos. Like no one would think twice about it, but you could be like, that's my Satan shit. And of course, hidden jewelry and hidden tattoos. I know people wear satanic jewelry under their clothing every day. Mm. I know people have tattoos um, that are just not in visible places right. and that they can look at them and they know they're there and that's for them. But it's it, it doesn't need to be for everybody else. All right. We're moving along here. Where are we at? So, okay, let's say you've considered all this stuff. Um, you You don't want to be in the closet anymore. You want to come out. Um, how can you do it? What are some approaches that you might take? You know, some, some people, again, will post it on Facebook for the world to see, and some people will just talk and on an individual basis. Uh, I think the f- most important thing for me and for most people, I would say, is that you need to be able to define what your Satanism is. Cause the first question that people have when you say I'm a Satanist is going to be, what does that mean? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like we said, even it could even be Satanists <laughs> wondering what <laughs> yeah. that means. Yeah. So you need to be able to explain yourself. If you're a brand newbie Satanist, um, you might not have thought about it so much. You might know why you clicked to join. You might know that initial draw that brought you in, but you need to be able to explain yourself a little bit more and explore what it really means to you. Um, and what it means to you might not be as deep or in depth as somebody else. So, it can be, maybe it is for you, activism, right? Yeah. Um, and maybe that's maybe that's enough. Some people are going to be very upset that 
you're just a satanic activist, but maybe that's <laughs> all it is for you, then you can yeah. explain that. Yeah. Uh, if it's something more than that, explain it. Is and it, it can change over time, of course. Yeah. The reason you join might not be the reason you stay three years later. Right. You know, maybe you just, you're curious at the beginning. Like, I think I'm down with this. Let me see. And then, you know, fast forward some amount of time and maybe it's really important to you. Maybe it was a great match. Maybe you're having a great experience. Yeah. Yeah, so you explain, I just align with their values, or I really like this depiction of Satan in this book, or right. in romantic uh, literature, or in the Bible, or whatever it is. Um, I think another, or the next part of that might be, explain that you're an atheist. It seems obvious maybe to you, but it is not going to be obvious to everybody that you tell tell it to. Yeah, yeah, when you're talking to just, you know, regular folks out there, we can't yeah. assume that they know shit yeah. about what we're doing. And and like we said earlier, be prepared for the fact that they might not believe you. They might be terrified. They might be any number of things. But the best you could do is tell them what it means to you. You're an atheist. You align with certain values that uh, Satanists align with. One method that I think is very common is for, for TST Satanists to present the tenets to somebody without the satanic temple at the top, it just is the, the list of the tenets. Right. You might do it with outsider Satanism as well. I don't really know what you might show if you're satanic rules of the earth or whatever they're called. Oh, yeah, if um, you're uh, into well, Church yeah. of Satan. Yeah, um, yeah, something like that. But to present them out of context. Although those might be a little upsetting. <laughs> those might be a little harsh. <laughs> uh, and they, those ones really are. So I don't have a problem necessarily with everything to do with the church of Satan, but those rules you read them, they are, they're harsh. They're harsh. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, present them out of context. And a lot of people are going to read them and be like, yeah, that makes sense. Common sense. What's yep. why, you, why are you giving this to me? Yeah. And you could say, well, these are the, the values that I hold as a Satanist. They are what Satanism means to me. Yeah. And then inevitably, well, if you don't even believe in Satan, why the fuck you call it Satanism? Right. That's going to happen. Right. So, um, it's up to you if you want to have an answer for that. I mean, you should have an answer for that for yourself. Yeah. You should kind of know. Yeah. Another method that I think is pretty common is sitting people down. If you're if you're into TST, sitting them down and watching the, the Hail Satan documentary with them. Mm. People love to do that. That's a, you know, yeah. a great advertising piece <laughs> by TST. God, it's such a misleading <laughs> movie. <laughs> Don't get me started. Um, yeah. Some some good old fashioned propaganda. Yeah. Um. But it's a fun watch, you know, and it people, is, yeah. I think people like it. People are like, ha yeah, that's funny. That's For sure. fun. You know, there's some crazy stuff that happens in the documentary. Yeah. So that's a, another way people do it a lot. They'll sit down and watch the documentary and they'll say, you know, what do you think? And just so you know, I'm actually a part of this. This is what I believe in. And this is the organization that I align with. If you are a satanic temple Satanist. And then you're going to get a whole bunch of questions, probably. No matter what you say, there's going to be questions, no matter how much you explain it. Yeah. And they're probably going to ask you to ex explain some things that you've already explained. <laughs> Maybe uh, so. You know, why Satan? That's a question. Yeah. Aren't you just a spicy atheist? Joseph did a whole episode uh, previously on, on why Satan, and he explained it. Yeah. Um, and you might have heard it before, but it's along the lines of yeah, not, what was that? What was that episode? Do you remember? Was that the episode? Yeah, why Satan? A true story of satanic. Possession. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, go listen to that one, guys. Yeah. If you want to, I don't know, an example. Yeah. I guess I don't know if my example is applicable to most people, yeah. but it might at least give you, I don't know, some sort of a hint as to what to think about. You yeah. Know? Um, but I'll give you the short version of it. That a lot of people say is that they don't want to define themselves by, you know, what they're not. They're not just an atheist. They say they're, uh, you know, a Satanist with a moral code or an atheist with a moral code. Right. And that's fair f for a lot of people. I actually don't um, like, personally, I don't like to say that atheist with a moral code thing because I really don't think that I need a quote unquote moral code codified to tell me what to be or how to behave. Yeah. Um, and that's. Yeah, I think it more, has more to do with just the fact that atheist isn't very informative. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I'm a, the reason I joined the Satanic Temple, it was because I saw something on the news about abortion rights or whatever, mm. and I went online, and I was like, all right, I'll give you my email. Um, and, and, and even then, I, I was saying at the time, I joined the Satanic Temple. I'm a member of the Satanic Temple. I never called myself a Satanist right. <laughs> um, until I was really active in, in this group. But, you know, for me, a big part of it is that it is – 
anti-Christian. It's the bad guy in that story. Yeah. Um, it's a little, everyone... it can be a little anti-Christian. It can be a little bit anti-establishment generally. Yeah. It's just fun. It I is also fun. A lot of people are probably cringing that I'm saying that because a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people are, are very, um, you need to have a deep informed knowledge of Satan and satanic literature and, and agree and align with his, all yeah. that stuff. And I have read some of that stuff and I do align with it. You know, I don't, I, I understand it, but it's, that wasn't what made me join. That wasn't what made me call myself a Satanist. That yeah. came after the fact. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Most people like in your case, they, they see something, be it TST or they find the satanic Bible, whatever it is, the little thing that just opens the door. That's yeah. just what opens the door. That might've been what got you there. But if it, if it becomes a thing for you, if you're interested and you pursue it and you learn a little more or, or get involved in the, the community aspect of it, of course, it's going to grow. It's going to become yeah. more than that. Yeah. And then another f like frequently asked question is going to be, what does that look like in practice? Do you go to church? Right. Do you go to whatever? Right. And you might not go to church, but you might go hang out with your Satan friends sometimes. Yeah. You might have little fundraisers. You might have little... Yeah, you, you guys do a thing on Sunday mornings. We do a thing on Monday nights on Zoom, you know, like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's our deal. Um, so, you know, be prepared to to tell them what that looks like for you. Right. Um, you know, you, you know that you haven't changed as a person and you are not really keeping any secrets about the way you spend your time necessarily. Yeah. Uh, you might be keeping it a secret who you're spending your time with, but um, any other frequently asked questions you think? I think those are the big ones. Why Satan? Yeah. And aren't you a spicy atheist? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, my most frequently asked question that I get is something about like, how do I join the Illuminati for wealth and fame? Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah. that's a different thing, I guess. Yeah. All right. Covered just about everything. I really hope so. All right. I think we've done a fair job here. Where can the people find you if you want to be found? Uh, you can find me by joining Satanic Delco. My name is Kirsten. Uh, or you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Satanica, S-A-Y-T-A-N-I-C-A. -A got it. All right, guys. If you've got just a moment out there, please visit the website at HailSatanPodcast.com. Stay safe out there and hail Satan. Ship it in at the table, please, sir. Was my head, but sir, I assume my food is set.